cantaloupes. And here's what's making news now. A man has been rushed to the hospital in serious condition after a stabbing in Scarborough early morning. Police were called to the area of Markham Road and Cougar Court. Toronto spokesperson Gary Long said police were initially called for a shooting. No other information has been released about the suspect. Peel police have taken a man into custody following a shooting at a townhouse complex in Brampton. One man has been sent to the hospital in serious condition. Police said another man involved in the shooting has been charged with attempted murder and firearm-related charges. Police are asking any witnesses to call Crime Stoppers. Police are searching for two people after an SUV slammed into the front of a home in Little Italy overnight. The vehicle crashed near Mansfield Avenue and Clinton Street. Witnesses say they saw a male and a female flee the scene. Police says the vehicle has not yet been reported stolen. The tenants cannot return until the house is checked for structural damages. Now to Rob for local sports. Thanks, Kaylin. Canada officially joins the United States and Mexico in a bid to host the World Cup in 2026. Minister of Science, Sport and People with Disabilities, Kirsty Duncan, made the announcement at BMO Field this morning. Canada would host 10 matches in total. It is unconfirmed how many matches each city will host. There might be a high probability Toronto would be the focal point for all the games. The World Cup would cost 30 to 45 million dollars split between the countries. The 2014 World Cup saw an audience over 3.2 billion people. For the second week in a row, DeMar DeRozan is named East Player of the Week. Damian Lillard joins the Raptors All-Star Guard as West Player of the Week. This is his 10th time in DeRozan's 9-year career he has held this honor. In four games last week, the All-Star Guard averaged a team high 24.8 points, 4.3 assists, and 4.5 rebounds. The Raptors are 29-2 against losing teams this year. They search for their ninth straight victory against the Brooklyn Nets tonight and look to earn their 50th win for a third time in team history. Dwayne Casey is the only Raptors coach to achieve the 50-win milestone. Tip-off is at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time at the Barclays Center. The Toronto Blue Jays confirm Marcus Stroman will not be the starting pitcher on opening day. Stroman has been sidelined since the 27th of February with shoulder inflammation. Manager John Gibbons leaves Jays fans curious, saying the Blue Jays can go with any starter on the day. Gibbons also isn't ruling out Stroman to pitch in the opening series against the Yankees. Last season, Marco Estrada took the mound. The Blue Jays are 8-10 in spring training thus far. They look to end a two-game losing skid today against the Atlanta Braves. Aaron Sanchez and Scott Kazmir began the game. Over in Washington, Alexander Ovechkin became the fourth fastest player in the NHL to reach 600 goals. The grade 8 capitalized twice in the win over the Jets last night. He was very happy that his family had the chance to witness it. Ovechkin said that his wife told him he was going to score last night. She came down to see the game and his parents saw the goal from their home in Moscow. He is the 20th player in NHL history to record this feat. He joins legends Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Gordie Howe, and others on the list. The 32-year-old winger can become the first player of his age or older to lead the league in goals since Phil Esposito in 1974-1975. He has 42 goals and 32 assists this year. Now, let's pass the puck over to Jen for some entertainment. Thanks, Rob. Ben Affleck and Matt Damon are implementing inclusion riders in their production company, Pearl Street Films, in support of equality in Hollywood. After Frances McDormand's award speech at the Oscars, Inclusion Rider was a top search of the night, according to Merriam-Webster. A short definition of Inclusion Rider is a clause that actresses and actors can insert into their contract that requires diversity within a crew or cast. Soon to be royal, Meghan Markle was seen out with Queen Elizabeth II for the first time at the Commonwealth Day Service at London's Westminster Abbey. This is another milestone in Markle's route to joining the British monarch's family. Marco wore an Amanda Wakeley coat and dress in Barrett by Stephen Jones. Big Sean and Janae Aiko's relationship has sparked a breakup rumors after Big Sean was spotted getting cozied up with singer Nicole Scherzinger. Sources told the Jasmine brand that Big Sean and Scherzinger looked like a couple at a VIP table at the Vanity Fair Awards after party. Aiko was reportedly livid after finding out about her boyfriend's fling and has unfollowed her maybe soon to be boo from Instagram. And now a look at this week's forecast.
President Donald Trump has fired Secretary of State Rex Tillerson on Twitter. Trump had made the decision to replace Tillerson with Mike Pompeo, the CIA director. The Department of State said Mr. Tillerson was unaware of the reason for his firing. Trump spoke to reporters outside of the White House saying, we got along actually quite well, but we disagree on things. Trump has chosen Gina Haspel for the first woman to be the director of the CIA, replacing Pompeo. Two bombs went off in Austin, Texas yesterday, killing a teenager and a 39-year-old woman and injuring an elderly woman. Police said residents found the packages outside of the houses, but were not delivered by postal or delivery services. This bombing follows another similar incident 10 days ago. Austin Police Chief Brian Manley says the three bombings appear to be connected. Palestinian Authority Minister Rami Hamdella survived an assassination attempt in the northern Gaza Strip earlier today. Hamdella just entered Gaza when a roadside explosive detonated. Hamdella was not injured, but seven of his guards suffered slight wounds. There has been no immediate claim of responsibility. Now back to Rob for updates on the Paralympics. Thanks again, Kaylin. Here is your Paralympics update. Yesterday was a good day for the Canadian Paralympians in Pyeongchang. Canada brought home three more medals. 18-year-old Molly Jepsen earned a gold medal in her first standing Alpine Super Combine. Elena Ramsey finished in third, joining Jepsen on the podium. The third medal came from Mark Arends in the 12.5 kilometer biathlon. The Prince Edward Island native reached the podium for the fourth time in his career. He will participate in the 15 kilometer biathlon on Thursday. After day four of the Olympics, Canada is in fifth place with 10 medals. The USA is in first with 17. Today, the giant slalom events. First run will take place at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Jepson and Ramsey will participate as well as Marku and Oakway. The second run is at 1 a.m. on Wednesday. Brian McKeever looks to add another medal in the cross-country skiing. Qualifying is at 9 p.m. and the finals are at 11.30 p.m. That's all for the Olympics. Now back to Kaylin for more news. Thanks, Rob, for that update on the Paralympics. Bare Naked Ladies are set to reunite at the June Awards for the first time since 2008 with their former band member, Stephen Page. They split with Page after he was arrested for drug possession in 2008. The June Awards will air March 25th. Nominees include The Late Gord Downey, Daniel Caesar, and Arcade Fire. WWE superstar John Cena has challenged WWE legend The Undertaker to a WrestleMania match on a live pay-per-view event. If accepted, the match is set to go down April 8th. WWE wrestler Jeff Hardy was arrested for DUI Saturday in Concord, North Carolina. It was reported that his 2016 Cadillac was totaled after he allegedly ran off the roadway and hit the guardrail. Hardy caused about $8,000 of damage to the car and $5,000 worth of damage to the guardrail. TMZ reported that Hardy's breathalyzer test read 0.25, more than three times the limit, the legal limit of 0.08 in North Carolina. Hardy is charged with driving while intoxicated and will stand trial in April. Now back to Rob for the rest of today's sports. Thanks, Jen. That's going to be a tough challenge for John Cena. In the CONCACAF Champions League, Toronto FC have a big challenge in Monterey, Mexico tonight. The Reds lead on aggregate 2-1 against Tigres thanks to Josie Altador and Jonathan Osorio. Kickoff is at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Across the globe, today in Europe, the final matches of the UEFA Champions League round of 16 take place today and tomorrow. Manchester United are set to host Sevilla, all square, at 0-0 at Old Trafford. In their last match at the Ramon Sanchez P1 Stadium, David De Gea's spectacular performance bailed out the Red Devils. Roma are set to host Ukrainian side Shakhtar Donetsk with a bit of work to do. The Jalorossi are down by one goal on aggregate, seeking to make the quarterfinals of the competition for the first time since 2008. A heavyweight battle will take place tomorrow at the new Camp. Barcelona are set to host Chelsea. That tie is 1-1 on aggregate. The last time these two played each other, Chelsea defeated Barcelona on aggregate with a 2-2 draw at the new Camp in 2012. As for Munich, they take on Besiktas tomorrow in Istanbul, leading 5-0 on aggregate. Bayern's match will take place tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. All other matches are set to kick off at 3.45 p.m. Eastern Time. And from the pitch to the gridiron, 
the NFL market has gone bonkers. Richard Sherman signed for the San Francisco 49ers on a three-year, $39.15 million deal. The Kansas City Chiefs add another receiver to their offense, signing for Los Angeles Ram Sammy Watkins on a three-year, $48 million deal. The only two-year deal is Drew Brees, re-signing with the New Orleans Saints, worth $50 million. Case Keenum is expected to sign with the Broncos, and according to Adam Schefter, Kirk Cousins is expected to sign with the Minnesota Vikings tomorrow on a fully guaranteed $86 million deal. That is all for your sports news for the day. Now it's time for Connor to share what is trending on social media. Thanks, Rob. I'm back once again with what is trending worldwide. Let's start in Europe, and one of the UK's biggest horse racing festivals starts today. The Cheltenham Gold Cup is a four-day event which sees some of the biggest names in the business compete for over a million dollars worth of prize money. But it's the small details that get people talking. For example, did you know over the four days, nine ten tons of potatoes and five tons of smoked salmon are consumed? Who says us Brits aren't classy? Moving over to America now, and a woman has been arrested on DUI charges whilst on her way to her wedding. Named locally as Amber Young, the 32-year-old caused a three-car collision with one person suffering minor injuries. Police spokesman Sergeant Chris Ross Scott released a tweet which has since been deleted saying Don't drive impaired. Till death do we part doesn't need any help. National Geographic has released its April front cover and has admitted for decades its coverage was racist. University of Virginia professor John Mason was asked by editor-in-chief Susan Goldberg to explore the magazine's past. What Mason found, in short, was that until the 1970s, National Geographic all but ignored people of colour who lived in the United States and rarely acknowledged them beyond being labourers and domestic workers. And is Netflix becoming a new straight to video? Well, that's what The Economist thinks. This comes after Paramount handed over the film Annihilation to the online streaming site after deeming it too obviously flawed for a big theatrical release. Starring Natalie Portman, Tessa Thompson and Oscar Isaac, Annihilation has received a limited theatrical release in North America and China. That's all for now. Back to Kaylin with the rest of the news. Thanks, Connor. Apple announced yesterday they are buying magazine app Texture. Texture brings over 200 magazines for a monthly fee of $9.99. Apple's senior vice president of internet software and service Eddie Q says we are committed to quality journalism from trusted sources and allowing magazines to keep producing beautifully designed and engaging stories for users. PC Optimum Points will replace Aeroplane Miles at Esso gas stations. PC Optimum program became available this year when Loblaws, PC Plus, and Shoppers Optimum merged. This will be effective starting June 1st. That's what's making news now. Check out our website, skedline.com. I am Kaylin Lopes. Bye for now.